All right, I've been meaning to talk about this for a little while because it's something that's always kind of perplexed me. So I've gathered these two together because, you know, they're similar in design. But this unit has better suction, you know, lower airflow, higher suction, as to where this unit has higher suck or higher airflow, but lower suction. Um, from what I remember, this was around 110 CFM, or was it 112? Somewhere around there. And then this one, I actually haven't measured on camera yet, but it does around 148. You know, very close to the pro team that I have because it shares the same motor. Other than this one being a 0, zero and the pro team being a 0, 7, which I think just indicates uh, different bearings. But, uh... I'm sure you guys are wondering, what am I getting at? Well, I know there are a small group of people that like to use these <clears throat> and use a uh, measurement called working vacuum or working water lift. And what this does is we have a plate in here that narrows this hole down. And uh, so it essentially chokes off the machine's airflow and then we're given a back pressure measurement. But... I feel that uh, working vacuum isn't a good performance indicator. It has its uses. If you were looking, you know, to figure out how well a machine would run like a turbine tool, this would tell you that. You know, it would tell you which two of these machines would run a turbine tool better. You know, and I've heard that it can be used to look for leaks in central vacuum piping, which makes sense because if you're not totally blocking them off, you know, it, the uh, suction can't pull things together in order to seal off leaks. So, I mean, it has practical uses. I just don't think that, uh, you know, measuring cleaner performance is really one of them. And that's why I've brought these two together. You know, I've been kind of waiting for machines and realistically, I probably have some already that might fit the criteria, but uh, <clears throat> since I knew that this one has higher suction and this one has higher airflow, that I could make my point pretty effectively with these things. So, I mean, essentially, this all comes down to suction with this. And, I mean, you could skew the results by changing the diameter of this hole here because the bigger an opening it has, the less back pressure would be created, you know, unless you have enough airflow to create the back pressure, if that makes sense, you know, because obviously it takes more force, you know, to move a large amount of air through such a small area. But like I said, we're just getting back pressure off these things. But um, let's take the working vacuum measurements on these. And then we're going to, uh, I'm going to go grab a uh, straight suction tool for these, a scalloped tool, which I've never really understood the point of. And then we're going to try cleaning with these two things. And we should be able to see a pretty significant performance uh, difference between the two. All right, so we are attached to the Mosquito Super. We'll turn this on. about a 76, 78, somewhere in that area. Now I'm gonna switch the cord out because I don't have more than one extension cord at the moment. And now we are connected to the carbon light. So as we can see, we clearly got about, oh, probably 18 to 20 inches more of working vacuum out of this unit. And it has a much higher, uh, 
you know, it has a much higher max suction, ranging anywhere from like 115 to 120. It's always so hard to say when the needle bounces like that. But, you know, as opposed to this unit, which gets in the mid to upper 80s. So, I mean, it's like I said, this unit has higher suction, but this one has higher flow. So now we're going to get the uh, scallop tool. All right, so this is the tool I'm talking about. They refer to them as a scalloped tool. And uh, obviously these are not really meant to seal to the floor. And I've never felt like these would work that well on like commercial grade carpeting. I, I don't know what the intended use for them is, but I always preferred the style with the glider on it. But I've thought, you know, maybe these would work a little bit better on pile carpeting. But yeah, let's uh, put down some debris and we'll try the two different vacuums on two different areas. And my main reason for choosing this is because this should... Should, uh... It should allow a little bit more air to flow than your standard uh, gliding tool. I'm going to start with a carbon light. You know, I have to admit that did a lot better than I expected it to. I mean, I could see that uh, on the forward stroke it left behind some material, but that's not a huge deal. Let's... So I'm going to place that there. I mean, you know, it left a little bit, but certainly not bad. Super. I mean, really, they both did fine. But I will say that, you know, between the two of them, I definitely had a lot more grab with this tool on this carpet. And I mean, you know, I maybe think the carbon light did slightly worse, but it's... So looking at the video I did, I think the performance uh, was a little more clear cut than what I thought at the time because I noticed that the uh, carbon light was definitely leaving more things around the edge of the tool and then you know it was not really disturbing the particles that were on the uh, hard floor either as to where the uh, super was drawing them in and that would be because of its airflow you know this machine has a much higher working water lift or working vacuum you know it was about what 18 inches higher than it but it clearly doesn't reflect how they actually perform as you know i've already stated the working vacuum test would be great if you're looking to run like a uh, a turbine tool and you want to know how well it's going to run it it would be fine for that it also has the application of testing for uh, central vacuum, you know, pipe leaks. But it's just, it's not a good performance indicator. Because um, we need to know the amount of airflow a machine has. And that doesn't tell you that. Airflow is what cleans. Suction is not what cleans. 
The vast majority of people who have been in the vacuum industry for years will tell you that same thing, and they've often indicated it with a little trick they do, where they put something like a coin in their hand, and what they do is they'll come and seal it off in their hand, run the machine, and then turn it off. It'll still be in their hand. We're applying the maximum suction of the vacuum, but we're not moving any air. And if you're not moving air, you can't expect to move debris. So airflow, you know, is a much more important component when it comes to your standard cleaning. But there are some applications in which a higher suction machine would be better, such as moving large amounts of uh, dense, like liquid, like water. You know, you're going to want uh, a machine with high suction if you're dealing with uh, cleaning up water. Of course, this is not a wet machine, so do not use it for that. <laughs> but... You know, or if you're, if you were moving, you know, if you had a vacuum system that was meant to move large amounts of, you know, material like sand or something, you know, a machine with high suction would be good for that too. But just normal vacuuming, you're going to want something with higher airflow. And I could tell that, you know, this tool sealed down to the floor better with the super than it did with the, uh, than it did with the carbon light. And, you know, it's, it's the airflow. It's not the suction. Because a tool will seal, a tool, a power head, whatever you have, will seal down to a surface when it overcomes the breathability of the surface. And, you know, it's not only breathing through the fibers, it can also breathe through the backing of a carpet. So if it overcomes that amount of breathability, it'll start forcing... Uh, you know, air through these channels here. And the super definitely has the airflow to do that. You know, we could see that when it went over the, uh, when it went over the threshold that the super was much better at drawing the particles off of the hard floor than the carbon light was. So, yeah, it's like, you know, between the two of them, as a uh, person who does, like, commercial-style cleaning... I would definitely take the higher airflow machine. And, you know, some people say, well, it is true that suction uh, helps maintain the airflow of a machine. When you have such a significant difference between the two of them, you know, this one being over 35 CFM weaker at the hose than this one. Well, I mean, you know, its airflow is only going to drop as you use them. It doesn't matter how much suction you have. It's not going to maintain that. So, I mean, they're both going to lose performance as they fill. It's just, why would you not start, you know, why would you not want the machine that starts with higher performance? That just doesn't make sense. <coughs> and, you know, I know this is a bit of a extreme example, simply because, you know, straight suction tools are very, very reliant on airflow. <clears throat> and, you know, it's like with a lot of... Uh, a lot of machines, you'll have a brush roll, you'll have a power head, you'll have whatever you have. So you'll also have to factor in the agitation to there. But, you know, it's also been shown that high airflow or machines with high airflow at the carpet are also generally very good carpet cleaners. Whether that's something like Kirby or Sanitaire, Royal, you know, it's like if you were to put them to one of these working vacuum tests, they would do very poorly. But, you know, we see here that there is a difference in their working vacuum, and still, this one came out on top. Because working vacuum is not a good performance metric. <laughs>